Welcome to Scanner School. We teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. My GMRS call sign is WQXJ920. And again, I want to remind you, if you have any questions about the scanner radio hobby, that I would love to answer your questions. Please dial 516-308-2885 or go over to scannerschool.com slash ask where you can click on the speak pipe link to leave me a voicemail or just fill out the form and submit your question that way. And if you do submit via speak pipe or a 516 number, I'll put you in the running for a free tutoring session. Our Ask Scanner School podcast episodes air on the first Tuesday of every month, so I need your questions now so that I can record that podcast episode. Now, today, we're on session number 239, and we are talking about AirSpy Software Defined Radios. Boy, that had a New York accent in it, didn't it? Software Defined Radios. Software Defined Radios. Sometimes I hear it. Sometimes I hear it for myself when I'm speaking. So listen, this was one of those times, not the accent, but when I bought my Air Spy, that I realized that I was really starting to get serious into the SDR side of the hobby. This was back before there was Nulek and RTL SDR dongles. This is when you had to buy the cheap DVB dongles that came with the antenna and the remote control. And they were about 25, 30 bucks, I guess, from Amazon. And they were horrible, horrible. These are the ones with the MCX connector plugs on them and the rounded corners, and they're all plastic. And they drifted and they overheated and they just were not reliable. And unfortunately, you can still find these types of software to find radios out there on the market. And I advocate do not buy them. Okay, they're horrible. I still have a box full of them because I was buying them up like like crazy because I was really worried at the time that people were going to say, hey, these radios can receive everywhere without limitations and they're not cell blocked. So mm, let's put an end to this software defined thing before it gets to be too big. Well, decade later, right? And And they're still available. So great. Good thing I invested in them, right? So anyway, I got these really cheap sticks. They were horrible. They were a pain to set up. They had to be set up. Let's put it that way. They drifted. They weren't reliable. I know I'm, I'm repeating myself here. And I bought an Air Spy. And I had to really think about buying an Air Spy because of the commitment, because of the price. $200 10 years ago, right? I'm not going to I'm not gonna account for inflation because inflation right now is a nightmare. But it was a lot of money, especially when the other SDRs were 30 bucks a pop. But I knew that the Air Spies were quality devices. I knew people that were using them and were extremely happy with them. They had like 10 megahertz that they can bring in. Not 2.4, 2.04 of usable, right? So I jumped in with both both feet. Well, maybe I went in head first. Maybe I hit my head because now I'm, I'm, I'm nuts for software-defined radios. But I bought my Air Spy, and now it's the R0, right? Release 0, the first one that ever came out, or I believe ever came out. And there was no looking back. Once I picked up my Air Spy, I realized the difference, right, between quality and and uh, affordability. Let's put it that way. No, nah, that's a bad way of putting it. Between the cheap stuff and the quality stuff. Okay, that's where we're going to put it. If you're serious about software-defined radios, and you're looking for something that will, I want to say, be bulletproof, more or less. Take a look at the AirSpy products. I highly recommend it. And today on the podcast, I'm going to tell you why I bought my radio, what I've done with it, and why you should get one too. Now, before we get any further in this week's podcast, I want to take a few minutes to thank our Patreon 
supporters. Now, Patreon is an affordable way for you to support the podcast and our upcoming expansion into YouTube for 2022. So think of Patreon as the PBS model of helping out Scanner School. For a monthly or yearly donation, not only do you help support the podcast, but depending on your donation tier, you will receive certain benefits. The most popular benefit tier being our $5 a month or the $51 a year tier. It's the same tier. We just discount if you can pay us over a year. Now, this tier offers the podcast and YouTube videos early. And also, you receive a free squelchy pack of stickers, several discounts, and access to our monthly live scanner radio roundtable discussion we hold monthly on Zoom. Oh, and by the way, most of the Patreon levels also get a special version of the podcast that does not include the middle advertising break in each episode. Now, find out more about Patreon and our supporting tiers by visiting scannerschool.com Patreon. I'd also like to take a moment here and thank all of our Patreon supporters. Alan Gonzalez, Arthur Heron, Bill Kay, Bob Middleton, Brandon Sammons, Brian King, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Dave Pasco, David C., Denny Crotty, Dylan Heider, Ed Walsh, Glenn Wright, Craig Johnson, Guy Lee, I Hate Junk Mail, Jack Haycock, Jacques Berry, James Broxson, James Felling, James Peruta, Jay Reed, Jeff Block, Jeff Chapman, Jeff McLeod, Jenny Taylor, Jim B., Jim Heinrich, Joe Curtis, John Cordov, John Keel, John Sweeney, John Goldenberg, Joshua Robb, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Les Stevenson, Lloyd R., Mark Beebe, Mason Kramer, Michael Gorman, Michael Kroger, Mike Lopez, Nicholas Stenger, Paul Teal, Paul Seish, Randy Lee Wright, Raymond Hill, Roger Senstrom, Ronnie Box, Sal Marandola, Scott Lefgren, Terry Wright, Tim Mazza, Todd Glendie, and William Arcand. Well, listen, even if you don't have an AirSpy device, chances are you have used their software and even realized that this was an AirSpy piece of release. It's the cornerstone of the SDR market. And in my free course, on SDRs, we highlight this one piece of software. And it's the one piece of software that when anybody is starting out with software-defined radios, I recommend it's the first piece you download and use to see if your software-defined radio is going to work and how to use it. Well, what is this? It's SDR Sharp. SDR Sharp is one of the oldest pieces of software that is still in development today for the SDR hobby. Yousef has done an awesome job at keeping things up to date, bringing in enhancements to it, and there's a whole plugin section for SDR Sharp 2 that goes along with it that other people contribute to. SDR Sharp, again, built, or built for the SDR hardware, supports pretty much any hardware that you have on the market. They also have Spy Server, which is another piece of software that is offered by the SDR AirSpy community. You can run online SDRs. It runs on Windows, Linux, Raspberry Pis, right? Because it's a subset of Linux, I guess. There is more help out there for this piece of software than you can imagine. There's the SDR Sharp Big Book, which is in English, Italian, Spanish, and Russian. And there's plenty of community plugins for SDR Sharp, including audio processors and recorders. CTCSS and DCS squelch options, DSD plus interfaces, frequency managers, screen readers, DVR or time shifts that happen here as well. Hardware tuning knobs and a whole lot more. So as I've said, even if you don't use AirSpy hardware, chances are you've used their software. If that doesn't tell you about quality of things, well, I don't know what does. So let me talk about my AirSpy and why I'm blown away by what I've discovered when I started using it. So in 2015, they released Rev2, the R2. So when you look at an AirSpy product, the, the, the Cube version of it, right? That's why it says AirSpy R2. It's Release 2. And what does Release 2 give you over the Release 1, which is the one I started out with about a decade ago? Better USB noise immunity better ESD protection for the RF circuitry, added ESD protection for the dual high-speed ADC inputs, better RF shielding, better RF filtering. They replaced the USB connector with a custom-designed, more robust four through-hole points, whatever that means. Better thermal stability. That's a big one. 
better compatibility with a spy rotor. We're going to talk about the spy rotor in the, in, towards the end of this podcast. So what does the Air Spy look like? The R0 and the R2 are pretty much identical. They're like a square or rectangular box, full aluminum enclosure. And there's an SMA connector on one end that you would plug into your antenna network, and the other end has a USB micro input. So you do need a USB cable to use the AirSpy R0 or R2. What's nice about the AirSpy as well is they are firmware upgradable. So if anything ever changes, you can fix it with firmware. But what's really sweet about the AirSpy is the fact that there is a 0.5 ppm TCXO built in, which means that you should not see drifting at all on these units. Once you've got the unit centered and calibrated, and it comes calibrated from the factory, by the way, and that's saved in a separate part of the chip than the firmware, so you can't override it and erase it, you should be rock solid steady with this device. Reception runs from 24 megahertz up to 1.7 gig or 1700 megahertz. And you can receive up to 10 mega samples per second, which equates to 10 megahertz, as long as you don't have this on a USB hub, right? That's going to sacrifice some of your throughput. Custom firmware, though, from what I'm reading, will allow up to 80 mega, mega samples per second, which is, right? That's crazy. There's an external clock output, which means you can sync the clock in this device with other SDRs or other pieces of hardware so that things run, you know, the, the clocks are synced. So things are running at the same instance. Okay. What's also cool is that on the inside of the case that you'd have to, you know, remove the case to get to though, there's internal GPIO pins. So if you are into doing sub other things off the board on this thing, you can grab that one. That's way above my pay grade and way above what we do here in scanner school. There's a 4.5 volt bias T, which we would use to power auxiliary equipment such as our spy verter. A bias T basically injects DC voltage through the coax. So do not enable this unless you know what you're doing. And we also have internal 5 volt and 3 volt pins. I love using my Air Spy. And what's great about the Air Spy is there's support for these pieces of hardware pretty much through any software that's out there now for the market. It used to be that you'd use SDR Sharp and then maybe you'd find something else, right? But HD SDR, even DSD Plus, SDR Console, they all work with AirSpy devices and they all work rather well. The nice thing too about an AirSpy device is there's no crazy drivers to install. There's no Zydag or Zy whatever the software is, right, that we have to install to modify our RTL sticks. Eh. Not on the AirSpy. It's plug and play. It just works. You plug it in the USB stack and boom, there you go. So what if the $199 or a $200 price point is just a little bit too steep for you, but you still want to play around with AirSpy devices? There's the AirSpy Mini. I also have an AirSpy Mini that I've been playing around with. In fact, that is my go-to device when I'm using SDRs on my MacBook. Yeah, I'm a Mac guy, okay? In fact, I'm on a Mac right now to record this. I use my AirSpy Mini with SDR trunk on my MacBook. The AirSpy Mini is a USB stick. So it's just like an RTL stick. A little bit smaller and thinner, by the way. But it plugs into your USB directly, so no external cable to worry about. And there's an SMA cable on the other end of it. It's a bit cheaper. It's $120 usually. They do go on sale, so make sure you check out Prague over on Twitter. Again, we'll... We'll put a link to his Twitter handle on there, and you'll find out when things go on sale. But it's about $120. It has a USB dongle look and feel. So it's smaller than, though, the new Elec and RTL sticks. Full aluminum case. Again, no drivers required. It's simply plug and play. Just like the R2, there are firmware upgrades available for this device. And again, like the R2, 0.5 ppm of parts per million TCXO. And just like the R2, 24 to 17 megahertz can be received. What's the difference here? Well, the sampling is a little bit different. Instead of getting 10 mega samples per second or 10 megahertz of visible bandwidth, you get six. Not a big deal. You lose four megahertz there. 
But again, if you're plugging it directly into your computer's USB, yeah, you'll get six. You'll get 10 on the R2. But when you plug it into a USB hub, you sacrifice the amount of bandwidth that can come out of that USB you know, tunnel. So that six mega samples per second IQ that you would normally get is cut down to three, which is not much better than a RTL stick. I use my Air Spies or my Air Spy Mini directly plugged into my MacBook. It works great. 10 mega samples per second, beautiful display. Same on my Windows machine. If I'm going to plug it into my Windows machine, if I plug it into a hub, eh, I get that cut in half. Plug it directly into the USB port, six mega samples per second. I can see a whole ton of spectrum on there. These work great. They are low footprint. They're thinner than one of these RTL sticks or SDR block sticks. They go down to 24 megahertz up to 1700 megahertz. They got great selectivity and sensitivity, which is why I recommend them because they have a lot of great internal filtering. A little pricey, as I'm telling you. This is one of those things that if you are serious with your RTL sticks and your Nualex sticks and you want to try something different, give AirSpy a try. Hey, I should market that and tell them that's my trademark, right? <laughs> so listen, on the other side of the break, we're going to look at some more AirSpy products. Again, if you can't tell, I love this device. I'm not an affiliate in any way, okay? So I'm talking to you like just for my own recommendations. I got nothing to gain from this recommendation for you here. On the other side of this break here, we're going to talk more about Air Spies. For anybody who's a Patreon supporter at $3 or more a month, you're going to skip this break and we're going to talk to you right away. If you want to help support the podcast, scannerschool.com slash Patreon. For everybody else, we'll talk to you in just a second. Hey, did you realize it takes us almost $100 a week just to have this podcast episode professionally edited and sent over to you? This doesn't even include website and podcast hosting, administrative help, and other monthly subscriptions that are required to put the podcast out there. Now, you can help us offset these costs when you shop online. So if you're looking for a scanner radio or some software, looking to bid on items over on eBay, or if you're looking to purchase anything, and I mean anything, on Amazon, you can help support Scanner School in the process and this doesn't come at any extra cost to you. So please check out scannerschool.com slash support for the multiple different ways that we have out there that you can help support us when you shop online. Again, scannerschool.com slash support. Are you looking to learn more about the scanner radio hobby? We currently have courses on how to get started and up and running with software-defined radios and how to turn your SDR into a fully functioning scanner radio. With free software, you can see more and do more with trunking than ever before. And with new courses scheduled for the upcoming months, our offerings will be expanding into both Uniden and Whistler hardware and software. Check out our courses at courses.scannerschool.com or by looking for the link in this podcast description. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues, too. Visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issue and sign up today. Did you know that a pager can make a great addition to your scanner radio collection. And even if I didn't own East Coast pagers, I still have one or maybe a couple of pagers as a part of my scanner radio setup. This is because a pager can be used to just monitor your local fire department or your regional departments. And if you set it up correctly to alert you when the tones are sent over the air, then the pager will remain silent until you need to know what is going on. This frees up your scanner to monitor everything else that's going on beside your local stuff or can prevent you from missing the local stuff because your scanner is busy doing other things. Now, pagers aren't just limited to fire dispatches anymore. Unication has great solutions to monitor both analog and P25 paging systems where many public safety and police departments are switching over to. Swiss Home and Apollo make great analog solutions as well, and all three still sell POGSAC and Flex pagers, still in use by many departments for text alerting. 
East Coast Pagers is an Apollo, Swiss phone, and Unication dealer serving the North American market. And of course, is one of my online companies. So if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, contact us for a free quote and let us know you're a Scanner School listener for something a little extra with your order. For our full inventory or to request a quote or just to contact us, please visit eastcoastpagers.com. All right, so... We are looking at air spy devices. What if we want to go into HF? What are our options? Well, I got two options for you here. The first one is a dedicated device called the HF Plus Discovery. There, this one replaces the HF Plus Dual Port. Okay, it's the HF Plus Discovery. Again, sets sets you back about two hundred bucks. It covers from 0.5 kilohertz all the way up to 31 megahertz. Plus, plus 60 megahertz to 260 megahertz. So it's HF plus VHF. Just like the R2, just like the Mini, it's a 0.5 ppm high precision, low noise TCXO. And again, just like the other two, there's no drivers required. You just simply plug and play. It can't get any easier than that. The device itself is a little bit of a plastic enclosure. I believe it's plastic enclosure, but it's like a flat deck of cards. It's really thin. It's it's rectangular shaped. It's not as fat as a deck of cards. And it has a antenna connector on one side, which is an SMA connector. The opposite end has a micro USB connector. So you will need a USB cable to plug this into your computer. So here's the trick though on this device. This is the oddball. The bandwidth on this is 760 kilo samples per second. It's narrow, really narrow. Less than one megahertz of spectrum comes in at a time. So you're not going to use this device to look at the entire band. Like you're not going to look at two megahertz or six or ten like you could with the other devices. This is very narrow, very, very narrow. A lot less than we've seen on other software-defined radios. But why? Because we're trading bandwidth for extreme performance. There's better filtering and rejection on lower signals where the bandwidth is much, much smaller. So in theory here, you should be able to pull out much, much weaker stations or those that are surrounded by noise and splatter that you could never bring in on other pieces of hardware. Because the filtering is so tight on this that it's like laser focused on the frequency that you are trying to bring in. Also, in theory, the HF Plus would be much more sensitive than other wider software defined radios on the market, such as the Hack RF, which is bringing in a whopping 20 megahertz or 20 mega samples per second. So I got curious. I didn't buy one yet. Yet I didn't buy one. At least I don't think I bought one. I have to go through my stack of software defined radios to see if I even have one of these or not. But people online and in forums are saying that if they go and they tune on HF, they grab their AirSpy HF Plus Discovery. That is their go-to when there's pileups or there's something they are trying to isolate when they are trying to listen to something. Many say that it works extremely well and they highly recommend it. So again, I can't recommend it. I If I have one, I've never used it. I got to, again, go through my boxes here and see if I bought one. But it does get good reviews. Again, it's 200 bucks. Based on AirSpy's other products, I think that it is a go. Now, what if, what if you have an AirSpy R0 or an R2 or an AirSpy Mini and you want to get HF, but you don't want to... Sh- Shell out another two hundred dollars for an AirSpy Plus Discovery. Well, AirSpy has another solution for you, and it's the Spy Verter R2. The AirSpy R Verter R2 adapts your AirSpy to cover one kilohertz all the way up to sixty megahertz. Again, just like the R2, it's got a GPIO reference clock on board. It has a ten megahertz spectral view. It includes in the box when you get it a barrel connector, and jumper. No external power is required when you're using an air spy. Why is that? 
because you're using the bias T, you enable it in software in order to send power to the spyverter that fires the spyverter and then it activates. And what does the spyverter do? How does it actually work? Because your air spy can't receive that low. The air, the spyverter goes between the air spy and the antenna. What does it do? It translates the entire HF spectrum to spectrum that the air spy can receive. So it takes the v, uh, the low band spectrum, the HF spectrum, and it's it reassigns it through from 120 megahertz all the way through 180 megahertz. So you're going to tune basically your air spy to 120, and that would be a kilohertz, basically the bottom of the reception of the air spy. Now in software, in, in SDR Sharp and other pieces of software, you would say you have a spy inverter, and this is the offset. Your software is going to show you your true frequency, the frequency that you are actually receiving. You want to do the math in your head to say, well, if I tune to X, I'm going to get Y. It doesn't work that way. The software will do that calculation for you. You just got to tell you tell it what the conversion is. So if you want to tune to whatever it is, you can do that through SDR Sharp and everything happens behind the scenes. But it's not just the air spy devices that the spy verta will work with. It'll work with anything basically that you want to power through it. So if you don't have a bias T, you can always use the micro USB adapter that comes with it. And that will send five volts to the spy verter powered up so that you can use it with something like an RTL SDR or a Nualec, right? A hack RF1 or anything else. So again, where do we put this in our chain, right? Well, you would plug your SDR into your computer. You would plug the air spy into the antenna port of your SDR. And then your antenna goes into the back of the spy verter. So that's great. We now have hardware, but what else is there? We've got software. Well, wouldn't it be great if AirSpy was actually a triple threat? Well, here we go. The U-Loop. The U-Loop is a loop antenna that is named after Yousef, the author and creator of SDR Sharp and the AirSpy products. It's a passive loop antenna design. And it's a kind of build-it-yourself type of kit. It basically comes with two pieces of coax that make the loop itself. It's one half and one half. And between those halves, you're going to put in a phase inverter on the top. And what that basically does is it takes the center conductor of the one coax and then connects it to the shield of the other, right? And then at the bottom of the loop, you're going to have a little T-shaped ballon. And again, that's going to connect to two bottom pieces of the loop. So with that in play, you've got the entire loop. And then the bottom of the balance is with the T is, that's the coax. It also comes with the U-loop that you would plug into your SDR. So it's supposed to be able to receive from 10 kilohertz to 30 megahertz on low band and up to 300 megahertz on VHF. Would not use this to transmit through. I'm going to tell you that right now. The U-loop was designed to be left indoors, but people are modifying it to be left outdoors. And they just use basically electrical tape or those that plumbing tape that you can wrap around itself and sticks and it creates a good watertight bond. They put that over the um, phase inverter on the top, the SMA connectors, the SMA connectors at the bottom, and also the ballon as well. And they're saying they leave it outside and it works very well. It's a passive design. There's no tuning required in order to get it to be resonant on the frequency you want to do. It's compatible with any SDR, with HF or VHF. But, of course, the AirSpy website says they recommend using this with a piece of hardware that has a minus 140 dBm of minimal detectable signal. What is a minimum detectable signal? Well, that is the signal at the input of a system whose power allows it to be detected over the background electronic noise of the detector system. Basically, in other words, this is your signal-to-noise ratio. Of course, I got a little bit of a Wikipedia definition there for you, right? Signal-to-noise. If you read the specs on the AirSpy website, they're going to say, hey, you can use this with anything you want. It's really not going to work all that great. And you're going to end up buying an HF Plus from us anyway because that is also rated for 140. And with the with the uh, 
the filtering and everything else on the HF Plus, this antenna is going to work like gangbusters. And it's going to really show you how well it works when you pair it up with an HF Plus. So you might as well just go ahead and buy the HF Plus. <laughs> it's what they're saying. So I, I love I love the humor on the AirSpy uh, side of the things. I do have a Uloop antenna. I set it up once. I played around with it just to see how well it would work. I really didn't tune around or play around with it really an extent, you know, to really do comparisons with it. So the jury for me personally is still out with it. I know a lot of people online are using them and are very happy with the Uloop antennas. Here's the deal, though. And it's a good deal. You can buy AirSpy products globally. They're not just here in the U.S. They're not just in North America. You can buy them directly from ITED, I guess. It's I-T-E-A-D dot C-C. They will ship worldwide directly from China. You can get them here in the U.S. from AirSpy.us. You can go to ComConnect and get them worldwide. You can go to Connect VK if you're in Australia. AOR Japan for obviously Japan. You can buy them on Amazon if they have them. I looked recently. I didn't see anything except the U Loop over on Amazon. Again, if you want to go to Amazon, please go through us, scannerschool.com slash Amazon. If you're in Spain, you go to Astro Radio, Netherlands, Ham Shop, Sweden, FB Radio, Moonraker is in the UK and the European Union. Nevin is in Slovakia and Chechnya. Wimo, I guess Vimo, would be Germany. And, uh, you know, I think I said RTL SDR as well. Plenty of places you can go globally and get an AirSpy product. I recommend it. Again, I bought them when I was playing around with things and I want to see how well they worked. And I have been extremely happy with the AirSpy products. In fact, sometimes I get a piece of software here that just doesn't seem to want to work with an RTL for whatever reason. It just gets very finicky that day. And I'll grab my AirSpy and it just works. It just works. And that's the beauty of the AirSpy product. It just works. So if you want to try dipping your toes in the water, the R2 is a great way of doing so. But if you want to try doing it a little bit more budget, budget conscious, the AirSpy Mini is another great way to try out AirSpy's products, find out their support, see how well they work without spending $200 US. So let me know, are you using an AirSpy product and do you recommend the AirSpy products yourself? Go to our Discord server, scannerschool.com slash Discord, and let's talk about AirSpy products over in our SDR section of the Discord server. And again, Maybe you have a device and you're having problems setting it up for some reason. I'd love to help you. You can book me for tutoring, scannerschool.com slash tutoring. You can use the calendar online to book a date and time that works for the both of us. And we'll send you a Zoom invite right away where we can then sit down at the scheduled time and do a screen share and communicate through the internet and uh, get to the bottom of whatever it is that you need help with. Don't forget to, I need your questions. 516-308-2885. Right now is a good time to call because the podcast is over. 516-308-2885. Leave me your questions for the next Ask Scanner School podcast or go to scannerschool.com slash ask. Use SpeakPipe or the form right there on site. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and share the podcast with somebody you know that might have an interest in AirSpy products because that is how we help more people here by sharing the podcast. So again, my name is Phil Lichtenberger and this is Scanner School where we teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. Catch you next week, 73.